Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, and welcome to another Hogwarts Legacy video. Now today is the official launch day for those of you that didn't get the Deluxe Edition, so a lot of you are getting your hands on Hogwarts Legacy for the very first time. So I figured I would make another Tips and Tricks video and warn you guys about all the potential mistakes that you're probably making. So if you're brand new to Hogwarts Legacy, I recommend you check out my first Tips and Tricks video, and then with this video I'm going to be going over even more tips that I didn't cover in the last one. All right, so the first mistake that a lot of you guys are probably making is hoarding your gear. In Hogwarts Legacy, there is absolutely no reason to hoard your gear whatsoever. Starting off, you have a very limited inventory space and you have to upgrade this by completing Merlin challenges and you can run out of space really quickly. And once you run out of space, it makes looting chests completely useless. If you have a completely full inventory and you try to open up a chest, it will tell you that your inventory is full and then you have to go and manually delete one of your items to make space for the new item. But this does not work with legendary chests. If you come across a legendary chest and you have a full inventory, you will completely lose out on that item. So the best thing you can do in Hogwarts Legacy is to go and select whatever the highest level gear is at the time that you have and simply sell all of the rest. There is literally no reason whatsoever to keep any of the items because once you get an item in your inventory, you will unlock the schematic in your appearances. So just hover over an item and look at the appearance tab and here you can change the look of any of your clothing items. So equip all the best items, make sure your inventory doesn't get too full and be sure to sell all of the clothing items that you aren't currently using. So the next tip is a big game changer for those of you that like to do a lot of exploring. Now, if you're like me, you can go literally for hours without seeing any combat at all in Hogwarts Legacy. Sometimes I just like to go exploring and flying around and interacting with things and finding collectibles. And it's not all about fighting and combat, which is something I love about Hogwarts Legacy. But if you know you're going to be doing a lot of exploring, for example, when I was exploring Hogsmeade and I was trying to find all of the collectibles, there are a ton of doors that have locks on them and you're going to have to go through and unlock every single one of them and play the little mini game. Well what you can do to bypass this is if you go into settings and change your gameplay to story mode this will then give you the option to auto unlock all of these doors. And the best part is there is no penalty in Hogwarts Legacy for changing your difficulty so you can put this on story mode and then change it back later at any time. So anytime I'm exploring Hogwarts or Hogsmeade and I know I'm not going to be doing any combat but there are going to be a lot of doors for me to unlock. I put it on story mode so I can bypass doing this mini game like 50 times over and over and over. Now normally the mini game doesn't bother me too much. It's not that hard. It takes maybe like 10 seconds to unlock it. But if you're really exploring Hogsmeade and you're on like number 10 or 11, it gets to be a bit repetitive and this is just a nice easy way to skip that lock picking mini game. So the next mistake that you guys are probably making is in regards to the Merlin trials. Now like I said earlier, if you want to upgrade your inventory space, you have to complete complete Merlin trials, but unfortunately to activate the Merlin trial, you're going to need some Mallow Sweet. So the tip I have for you all is that as soon as you unlock the Room of Requirement and you have the ability to grow some plants, I highly, highly recommend that one of the first plants that you grow in the Room of Requirement is the Mallow Sweet plant. That way you can keep coming back to the Room of Requirement and harvesting these Mallow Sweet plants anytime you plan on going out and completing the Merlin challenges. So me personally, I'll collect my seeds and fly around and complete five or six Merlin trials at a time. And since we're on the topic of growing plants in the Room of Requirement, the way to get some of the best seeds for the best plants in the game is actually up in Hogsmeade, but it's on an unmarked building. If you look at the Hogsmeade map, there is only one location where you can go to buy ingredients for plants. But if you do a little bit of exploring, there is actually a building up at the top part of Hogsmeade called Dogweed and Death Cap, and this is where you can get the Venomous Tectala seeds, the Mandrake seeds, and the Chinese Chomping Cabbage seeds. So these are the three best plants that you can use in combat. These are extremely handy and have gotten me out of a ton of situations. These plants are an absolute must have and you could have completely missed out on getting these seeds if you didn't do a little bit of exploring in Hogsmeade. So make sure you stop by the Dogweed and Death Cap and get yourself those seeds. So the next tip I have for everyone is when you go out and try to capture the magical beasts. Some of them are very fast and are hard to capture the normal way. Before I figured out this tip, I was running around for at least a half an hour trying to capture a hippogriff. Uh, but what I discovered is if you use the Levioso spell on any of the creatures, it will hold them in place just long enough for you to capture them safely. So if you're out capturing beasts and you want to save yourself a ton of time and headache, make sure you use the Levioso spell on the creatures. 
So the next big mistake that you're probably making in Hogwarts Legacy has to do with the in-game map, and it has to do with the Hogwarts section. Now, if you're like me, you've probably struggled with the Hogwarts section of the map because it is just a complete cluster. You have to go around and like click on the flags and try to zoom in, and it's just a real pain to go through and select each individual icon that you might need. But specifically for the Hogwarts section of the map, you can go over here onto the left where it breaks it down into categories, and you can actually select things this way. So you can select the category and then it will give you the individual flu flames for each of the locations within the castle. So this will save you a ton of time and headache when you're exploring Hogwarts. So next up, I want to talk about the world map because this isn't specifically explained anywhere. And it's if you go to the world map and you zoom out all the way, it will then give you a breakdown of each of the sections. So if you're an explorer like me and you want to go out and find every single collectible, just zoom out all the way on your map and it will give you a breakdown of what is in each section. And most notably, it will even tell you the enemy levels that you can expect to encounter in this region. So when you're first starting to branch out away from the castle for the very first time, you can get a general idea of how safe each zone is for your character based off of your level. So if you're only like a level 5 or 6, it's probably not a good idea to head over into the Forbidden Forest because it requires levels 20 through 40. And then the next mistake you guys are probably making when you're exploring is that you're not absolutely spamming the crap out of the Revealio button. Before I figured out you could use the Revealio button on your broom, I was manually trying to go through and find every single collectible, and I wasted a good three to four hours trying to find all the hidden platforms and balloons that you have to pop, when all you have to do is spam the Revealio button and it will show you everything that you can interact with in the area. For example, it will highlight enemies, chests, and any of the hidden platforms that you need to complete for one of the challenges. So definitely spam the crap out of the Revealio spell when you're flying around on your broom exploring. So the next mistake you guys are probably making is in regards to how you're earning your XP. Now in Hogwarts Legacy, you do have the freedom to go anywhere you want in the game, but different regions are going to have stronger enemies than others. For example, sticking around the castle, you're going to find some fairly easy enemies, and then branching out and going towards the southern part of the map, you're going to find a lot stronger enemies. Well, if you're having trouble leveling up just by completing quests, and maybe you're not a high enough level to progress any further yet, well, I have some good news. There is a way that you can go and farm some XP, and it's by completing the battle arenas. Now there are two battle arenas that are located on the map, and then there is a third one in the Forbidden Forest if you have the Deluxe Edition, and these battle arenas are a great way to farm experience points and a great way to farm the challenges where you have to defeat a bunch of enemies. And if you want to earn XP even faster and level up really quickly, then turn the game settings down to story mode, and that will make the enemies way easier, and you can easily complete these over and over and over for a ton of fast XP. So if you're in the need of some quick level ups, then go and complete the battle arenas. So the final tip I have for you all, and probably one of the biggest mistakes that you guys are probably making, is how you're going about making money. Now when it comes to earning gold in Hogwarts Legacy, the primary way that most of you are making your money is probably from selling your gear. But depending on the rarity level, you're probably only making 60 to 90 gold every time you sell a clothing item. But I'm here to tell you this isn't the fastest way that you can make money. The fastest way that you can make money in Hogwarts Legacy is by going around to these small creature dens and capturing a ton of creatures and then selling them for profit. So for example, what I like to do is go to the moon calf location. I will capture as many of the moon calves as it will let me. Then I will fast travel to another moon calf location, capture as many as it will let me. Then I will take them back to Hogsmeade and sell them for 120 gold apiece. So capturing and selling creatures is by far the best way to make money in Hogwarts Legacy. And after about a half an hour to an hour of doing this, you're going to have enough money to buy literally anything you want in the entire game. So that is going to do it for all the tips and tricks that I have for you guys in this video. If you guys enjoyed it, then please give this video a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. That way you guys don't miss out on any future Hogwarts Legacy videos. And then if you guys want to join the community and talk about Hogwarts Legacy, you can head over to the Discord. We have about a thousand members over there. And then if you want to catch my live stream, I stream on Twitch at Swanee Plays Games Live. And that is going to do it for me, everyone. And I will talk to you all in the next video.